The Yuuzhan Vong were, and continue to be, one of the most controversial aspects of the Star Wars Legends continuity. The new Jedi Order series, which started off with Vector Prime, annoyed a lot of people, for one, due to the death of Chewbacca, and because the series tonally didn't seem to match the Star Wars universe and a lot of what came before. Now, that's not to say that the Yuuzhan Vong were bad, or that the new Jedi Order as a whole was bad, I'm just saying it's controversial, and the series actually has somewhat of a special place in my heart, as evidenced by the fact that I've dedicated a whole series to re examining the conflict. Today, I'd like to talk about whether the Yuuzhan Vong will ever be recanonized. Now, this will be somewhat of a rambly video, less tightly edited than usual, so for those of you who don't want to actually watch the whole thing, but want to know my opinion, I do not think the Yuuzhan Vong will be returning to canon. The reason today's video is a little bit different is because, to be frank, I've been absolutely overwhelmed with things going on in my personal life. As some of you know, I've got a baby due in September, my best friend also just had a baby, and I've got some stuff going on in my personal life with family, nothing bad, but just that's kept me busy. Just planning a baby shower, having to buy things, putting together things, trying to get my house in order, which means, you know, doing a lot of painting and landscaping, and just general adult things. I haven't had a lot of time for YouTube, even though it's my job. It's kind of been like, I'm taking a lot of days off or a lot of half days, and I did have a video planned for today, but it's, you know, 12 o'clock at night, and to be honest, this is all I have the energy for. However, I will be doubling my efforts in the coming days, and I think probably tomorrow or the next day, my schedule should be back to normal. I've got a few battle breakdowns planned, I've got an episode in my Yuuzhan Vong series that I'm going to cover, I'm going to do an in-depth discussion about Star Wars blasters versus real-world weapons, and probably a Starship versus as well, maybe a Factions compared too. So hopefully you guys have that to look forward to. But let's get to the actual discussion, and I think before we look at the current state of canon, it's good to understand what Star Wars Legends really was. So, the first thing was that after Episode 6, the Star Wars Legends Expanded Universe was basically given free reign to do whatever they wanted, because there was no real prospect of Episode 7, which is why, by the way, I think it's understandable that Disney chose to wipe the Legends continuity, though personally I kind of wish they would have continued two separate continuities, but that's a discussion for a different day. But the point is, there was absolute total freedom, and what's more, Star Wars book publishing was moving between Bantam and Del Rey. In the late 90s, this all came together in what was envisioned as a 29-book arc, the largest non-film project in Star Wars history, bigger even than the multimedia projects like The Force Unleashed or Shadows of the Empire. 29 books introducing a new enemy which would eclipse everything that had come before it, a war the scale of which would be far greater than the Empire versus the Rebels, the New Republic versus whatever faction, just something new and something big. Timothy Zahn, who most of you guys probably know as the creator of Thrawn and countless other things within the Star Wars Legends Expanded Universe, has explained that even by 98, during the hand of Thrawn duology, that this idea for a greater, large story was already in the minds and consciousness of those working on the Expanded Universe, and there's very clearly references to a greater threat in the second book of the Thrawn duology, Visions of the Future, where they vaguely mention some secrets and some enemies hiding in the unknown region. But at that point, things were still relatively uncertain with the Yuuzhan Vong, so nothing is mentioned by name. But the seeds are there. And the first reason why I don't think Star Wars canon will ever see something like the Yuuzhan Vong again is because I don't think Star Wars writers will ever have the option of doing such a large, expansive arc with so much creative freedom. Now, of course, the new Jedi Order didn't end up being 29 books. It was 19, along with some short stories and the Invasion comic line, but the universe was nonetheless changed as a whole, and the state of Star Wars moving forward, for better or worse, would really never be the same. That can't happen again. I think that Disney and Lucasfilm really now, that Star Wars has kind of underwent a revitalization, because remember, the, the late 90s and certainly before that, I mean, especially before the Thrawn trilogy, in the early 90s was really kind of a dead area for Star Wars. There was a lot less interest, and again, it was there was kind of the idea that yes, we would eventually see prequels, which is why that sort of era of time wasn't covered in the books. 
but most believed that we would never see a sequel trilogy or even a sequel movie. I don't think we will ever again be in the position where a Star Wars movie in the future is doubted, and something as canon changing as the Yuuzhan Vong War could appear exclusively or first in a non-movie format. That being said, of course that doesn't eliminate the possibility of the Yuuzhan Vong appearing first in movies. Perhaps that would be the next trilogy of movies, and some said, of course, that that would have been their ideal sequel trilogy. Well, I disagree, and I don't think... I mean, there's multiple reasons why I don't think the Yuuzhan Vong would ever be recanonized, much less through film. First of all, the Vong invasion was highly controversial among fans. Not only because of the death of Chewbacca, although that was one major reason, but many saw the Vong as pretty hokey. I mean, it's arguably cheesy to have had this great unknown enemy, more powerful than any that ever came before, waiting in the wings outside of the galaxy. The Vong themselves are pretty much also edgy. They self-mutilate, they're all about pain and death and torture and destruction. It's, I mean, a lot of people see it as almost like bad fan fiction. I don't think I would go that far, but I understand why just such a paradigm shift from, you know, the good versus evil of the Empire and the Rebellion goes to everyone coming together and fighting this one unified invasion, invading force. And the fact that a large portion of people thought the Vong invasion was stupid is, I think, reason enough why they would never be featured heavily in a movie. And I don't think that they would go half measures either. You know, bringing the Vong in through the Clone Wars, as was originally discussed at one point, uh, then not featuring them again, because it's like, it would be like bringing Thrawn back, but just as an aside. You, I don't think you would bring a Yuuzhan Vong back into canon, and then, you know, because that's sort of, over, not overshadowing, but that's something in the back of your mind throughout going, like going forward, and it's something that you would expect, and it's something that, as I've, as I've explained, that I don't think they want to deliver on. More importantly, I think the Vong fit well in the old expanded universe, but when I really think about them, I don't think that they're coherent with the main tenets of the Star Wars saga. Conflict is almost always brought uh, about by the flaws of an individual. You know, Anakin falling to the dark side is basically the main theme of the first six movies. We see something similar, of course, with Kylo Ren. You've got enemies and you know, it's it's really as much a battle for one's own soul as it is a battle against the forces of good and evil. Yes, you often have some sort of big, bad, overlord-type figure like the Emperor or Snoke, but it all comes down, really, in the end, to winning against the evil that's inside of you. And I don't think that was a theme really explored much during the Yuuzhan Vong War. Yes, the Jedi, obviously, there was the fracturing of the Jedi Order to a degree, and then later... We we see some of that stuff with Jason, but it's just the Yuuzhan Vong as an enemy, I don't think kind of brought that same, it's not really moral nuance because in the end it's kind of like a modern fairy tale, but I don't think they bring any aspect of that to canon or just to the story generally. I mean, there are ways that it could be done. Obviously, you don't have to take the Vong invasion as it existed in Legends. Certainly, you don't have to do that. You could reintroduce the species and have things go totally different. But I just don't think, again, when you take the effect of the controversy, I don't think it's something that Lucasfilm would ever plan. Maybe 50 years down the line, if the uh, new EU is still going, maybe that's something when they've completely run out of material to cover, but I still really don't think so. I also wouldn't be surprised if the end of episode 9 brings with it a piece to end all pieces. This is something that my good friend Wayward Jedi has talked about, and I mean, we've had some mention that episode 9 will be the end of the Skywalker saga. I don't, I really don't know whether we'll see much in the future after that point, or whether Star Wars will end there. I, if it does happen, I think we'll have a fairly large time skip, because the whole aspect of the Chosen One prophecy was, you know, the two sides you know, the true balance, um, bringing peace forever. And the Chosen One prophecy failed in Anakin. Perhaps it's failed after or before that. Maybe Luke was the Chosen One at some point. But I think with Episode Nine, the prophecy will come to fruition and perhaps there will be peace. But that's something more for Wayward Jedi. It's just something he said that kind of got me thinking about whether we really will see um, future-oriented stuff in the new canon or whether a lot of time will be spent looking at the past. Because you could basically go back to an infinite number Number of places in the past in the Star Wars universe tell compelling stories with completely different characters, different events, but yeah, I'm not sure whether... I'll, I'll be interested to see whether the new expanded universe stretches out 
after the events of episode 9 or whether that will basically be the end of the story and everything else will be moving forward or backward I guess. As many of you know one of the Vong's most unique attributes was the way they were disconnected from the force. I also don't think that that's something that fits the new canon. I think George Lucas has always had the idea that the cosmic force really connects all beings and to remove an entire species connection to this larger thing I think really cheapens the idea of the force and I really don't think George Lucas cared much about the Yuuzhan Vong war. We know that he did meddle in in legends sometimes especially early on with things like the Thrawn trilogy. He would veto certain aspects like having Obi-Wan return uh, as a clone or having the Sith instead changing them to the Nogri but I think by the time we got to something like the Yuuzhan Vong war he was much more interested in dealing with the prequels and I just don't think that this He's talked about how the Legends universe was separate from his own, and that in his vision, you know, Luke never had a wife, none of these things ever happened. And I really don't think if someone were to talk to him, I mean, I don't know, I'm sure he knows what the Yuuzhan Vong are, but I don't think he knows a whole lot about them. And I think if you talked to George that... He wouldn't have, pr I mean, he obviously signed off on it, but I don't think fundamentally he would agree with the idea that a species can be disconnected from the Force. So, and I think that the new canon has stuck more closely to George's view than with the Yuuzhan Vong view. And maybe that's why we haven't really seen other kind of Force altering things. To my knowledge, for example, the Force altering effects of the Isilamari haven't been recanonized. So, I don't think they'll make that mistake again. Most importantly though, I really don't know whether the new Jedi Order was a success. I mean, with things like Shadows of the Empire, Knights of the Old Republic, or The Force Unleashed, we saw not only books, but also video games, comics, and to my recollection with the new Jedi Order, besides for the 19 books, all we really got was, I think, 7, 8, 9, maybe even only 6 um, issues of the Invasion comic series, and I think that was basically it. I mean, we got some short stories and of course the novels, but no video game tie-ins. I don't think the Yuuzhan Vong have ever appeared in a video game, besides for a brief mention by Candorous. So, I think they've went all in on the Vong as a big multimedia project, and if they ever do want to have such a great, large, overarching story, which I think would be really cool, and I think they really need to fill the time between episode 6 and episode 7 um, with the, one of these great overarching stories, something like a Thrawn campaign, or, you know, something that they can actually kind of neatly, it still changes the universe, it introduces a lot of new EU characters, but something that can kind of be introduced and tied up, and I just don't think if they go that route again that the Vong will be the enemy because I don't think fan reaction, I don't think sales, um, I don't think the way the species was handled is something that current Lucasfilm would want to replicate. So for all those reasons and really a lot more, I don't think the Vong will be recanonized. There are arguments the other way though, and I think the most kind of notable one is that the new EU has been focusing a lot on the unknown regions. And as you know, if you've read the new Jedi Order, the Vong entered the galaxy um, through the Tingle Arm but basically came from outside, from unknown. Um, the galactic geography is a bit weird. The unknown regions are still kind of technically within the galaxy, but the Vong would be someone or the type of kind of beings who would tr use space like that to, you know, marshal their forces to stage a grand invasion. Um, without, you know, going too far into spoilers, there's something of that effect in the new Thrawn book. Um, of course, it's mentioned most prominently in Aftermath, um, when we talk about Sidious sensing disturbances and things like that. But part of me wonders whether that was just, you know, Chuck Wendig, uh, trying to get, you know, hold on for more books, whether that's part of some greater Lucasfilm, uh, concentrated effort to hint at some threat. I don't know. I mean, we know that Snoke was obviously out there. The First Order saw its birth in the Unknown Regions. Snoke is a being from somewhere outside the galaxy or outside the main part of the galaxy, maybe from another, another galaxy entirely or maybe from somewhere stranger. But I just... There seems to be an enemy there. There seems to be something strange there. I think it's going to be far more mystical, um, far more strange than an alien race from another galaxy. Certainly not ones that use strange uh, organic starships and uh, love pain. I think that there's something deep. I mean, and we know that Palpatine largely sensed the force. 
um, causing the disturbance, which kind of suggests that it's not the Yuuzhan Vong, because really, the way Jedi usually, or any Force user, kind of senses the Vong is by an absence of a presence. Like, you'll, you'll be feeling things happening, but you won't be able to pinpoint the exact cause of that. That's how the Yuuzhan Vong was typically portrayed. Um, I mean, we can talk about Vong sense and stuff, but that's different. Um, so that's kind of like the opposite of what we've been seeing in canon, where a lot of the mystery and a lot of the four coming enemies are tied to you know to the force Thrawn and the Chiss do talk about in the first Thrawn novel which I feel like we can talk spoilers about because it's been out for so long they do talk about great threats in but you know that was kind of a constant theme that's sort of echoing what Zahn did in um, Visions of the Future and I think I don't know it just it feels a little bit too too broad I guess and it just, there's no reason for me to believe that it would be this, again, often lamented story arc from the old EU. I mean, many people were glad to see the Vong gone. I still don't really know how to feel about it. The final thing I think people point to to say the Yuuzhan Vong are canon or the Yuuzhan Vong will be recanonized is the idea that they would have appeared in the Clone Wars. I think it's very telling, first of all, that they didn't appear in the Clone Wars. There's no mention of the outbound flight, of Joris Sabaoth, of the Chiss, of Palpatine sensing dark disturbances. Um, and if the Vong, like, I really think like the Vong, and this is kind of my understanding too, the Vong never made it very far. I mean, the show was canceled, but I, I'm not sure whether they didn't make it far into production. I think there was really just a sketch of what a Vong warrior might look like. I think they didn't make it very far into production because the show was cancelled, but if they were included, I really think that it would have just been an easter egg, because the Clone Wars really ignores almost all of the post-Endor EU content, and not only that, I mean, it really ignores most EU content besides for itself, which kind of works, and I mean, I'm sure the guys over at Lucasfilm are happy now, because it hasn't tied their hands, because they canonized the show, obviously, it hasn't tied their hands with what they can do moving forward, it hasn't really forced anything into canon, and I think if the Vong were included, it would have just kind of been a slight nod to those who kind of liked the canon. We really are seeing more elements of the EU brought into canon now with things like Rebels formally reintroducing Thrawn. I mean, if the Clone Wars really wanted to be this big source of EU content, they could have easily mentioned Jorah Sabaoth or something like that. So... I don't think the plan was ever to have a use on Vong arc or anything like that. And even when the show was being produced under the former EU, and I don't think that now moving forward, that will ever be any sort of plan. All of that, however, is just my opinion. This is a really interesting topic. And I wonder what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments whether you want to see the Yuuzhan Vong be recanonized, and then also whether you think they will be recanonized. I'm curious whether there's any people that don't want the Vong, because just to be frank, I think most people that think the Vong will be recanonized are those that want them to be. So I'm curious to whether there's anyone that hates the Yuuzhan Vong, but thinks they're on their way back. And, and yeah, that's, that's today's video. This is totally different than my normal style content. I've just looking at the time. I've been rambling for almost 20 minutes, but this has been a really fun discussion. This is something that I really enjoy doing. You guys know that I'd like to eventually do a podcast and I've done some of this on the second channel too, but I really feel bad because I just, I feel like I owe you guys content because you guys basically allow me to do this as my job and to not even be able to to do that, to not even be able to do this greatest job in the world because I'm doing other things, it's I'm a little bit disappointed, especially because I know that I like I streamed today. I should have honestly just do it, did a video, but like I know that I haven't been as productive as I could be. But I've had my kind of time to really be productive personally, to get the baby's room ready, to do all the stuff I needed to do, and. Like, people say, you know, we know we'll understand if you want to take a break. And that's totally cool. And I really, really appreciate hearing those messages. But the practical matter is, I can't afford to take a break. Not because, like, I'm short on money. I don't mean afford like that. But because it's so easy to die off as a YouTube channel when you're my size. If you're H3H3, you can take a break for three months, come back, you know, get a million uh, hit video. But for me, it's like I need to be uploading because YouTube rewards me for watch time. It rewards me for consistency. If I take a few weeks off, like, what it will do to my channel and my income is really frightening. So that's why, like, I feel guilty. That's one 
one of the reasons why I feel guilty. Plus, of course, I like I like being able to interact with you guys. I haven't been as active on the Discord as I would like to. So yes, moving forward, at least until the baby is here, let's try to get back to normal. Try to get back to the normal upload schedule. Less low effort, quick videos like the one I did on Rebel One. More in-depth, standard content. Thank you guys for getting this far. I'm sure many of you guys did, which I really appreciate. Um, if you want to help the channel out, feel free to subscribe. Give this video a like. Don't share it. It's really not that good. But uh, yeah, hit the bell, and I will see you next time. As always, guys, this has been your friend Eckhart's Ladder. Until next time, may the Force be with you.